good to see you there. Obviously, this has been the big story, the bond overlay for the equity market at the moment, but we did see fixed income taking a little breather overnight. That's right, Leanne, absolutely. Uh, we've actually had um, refreshingly normal market performance since the election, really, with you know risk-on type uh, environment and equities performing and, and bonds selling off, which has been a counterpoint to the last few years with you know huge central bank intervention. So uh, we actually saw the end of that sell-off overnight with the US 10-year yields actually lowering by about two or three points. Not a great move, but uh, in the face of strong US retail sales data, you might have expected the yields to go higher, but actually they rallied in slightly. Mm -hmm. Are you expecting still more volatility there? I mean, should we be, when we talk of a steepening yield curve, obviously, are we expecting further steepening to come? Uh, look, I think uh, if you want to use these kind of words, there's definitely a steepening bias. I think as we see more appointments in uh, the Trump team, that you know you'll get a clearer picture of how they intend to push through some of the things that they talked about in the campaign. But definitely, the markets had a perception that there'll be uh, you know more inflation generated in the in the near term, and that's what's pushed yields up. But I think that that probably was a little bit overdone. You know, we've still got the fundamentals in place that we had pre-election. So, you know, things like worsening demographics and uh, and a struggle for growth globally. So that should really keep a lid on yields. OK. Talk us through what you've been watching. I know Westpac issuing $1.5 billion of 15-year non-call subordinated bonds. This is one that you've been trading. Yeah, that's right. So overnight, Westpac issued, as you said, one and a half billion of the 15-year uh, non-call 10 subordinated bonds in the US. So uh, we've seen some Australian companies come down the capital structure recently with US dollar issues, with ANZ's hybrid 10-year uh, hybrid, the notable um, first mover there. Westpac doing a subordinated issue, so higher in the capital structure than a hybrid. But interestingly, they had over four billion of demand for the one and a half billion issue size. So they managed to price that nearly 30 basis points inside their initial price estimations, which is a really, really big result for them and, and a significant reduction in interest costs on that bond. Mm. Now, what about, um, I mean, in, in terms of local bonds, the, the rally in iron ore seeming to take a breather overnight, potentially coming to an end, I guess, depends on your, your view around that. Are you seeing some selling, a lot of activity happening in those mining, you know, the, the mining bonds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in particular, we've been looking at Fortescue. We've been a big supporter of that credit over the last few years, uh, and they've obviously performed very well. And the equity price is, is testament to that. So, uh, we've we've actually been taking profits on their 20, uh, 2022 secured bond, which is trading around the $114 level from, you know, lows back in January around sort of mid 70s. Um, we we typically put clients into it when their 2019 bonds were called early back in June, and uh, we're seeing clients take profits on those in the order of about $10 and moving into a, a 2021 bond from the parent company of Genworth Mortgage, um, which we know from our market here. Um, at, as I said, 2021 US dollar denominated bond yielding about 8.8%. All right. Fantastic. Jonathan, we'll leave it there, but really, uh, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Leanne. Jonathan Sherry.